what is going on guys welcome back to the channel now we are back watching a disney gallery of the creation and the making of the finale of the mandalorian season two super excited to watch this uh, uh obviously with the mandalorian season two ending with luke showing up and all that it's really really cool stuff and uh yeah i'm very interested to in see what happened what's going on here so let's jump right into it I think there's an interplay with storytellers and the people you're telling the story to. Does this look Jedi to you? <laughs> I find that the emotions run very deep with John and people's relationship, especially people who grew up with it from a young age, yep. feel a lot of connection to it. Yes, 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 I do. I think the one consistent thing I'm feeling is that people care deeply that it's being handled correctly and that it's being handled respectfully. It meant so very much important. to them and they want to see it continue into the future and feel like it's all connected with consistency. And we're very lucky that between Lucasfilm and Kathy, the whole group that we have are incredibly uh, supportive and encouraging. It's true. God, the Mandalorian so good. There was a character that came in at the end of it, and in the script it was written as a character called Plo Koon. And I think uh -huh. Plo Koon was a Jedi, I think, from the prequel trilogy, and I was like, well, how are we visualizing this? And he said, come over here in the corner. I want to talk to you. And he gave me the real yeah he was back, not Pokum, but that's was, hilarious and uh i needed a moment that's and actually hilarious i've had a long relationship with John, and Dave. Said, are you luke skywalker Ooh, we were never to say i bet that we felt good and then uh, in post we can give it even now <laughs> John when we just smiling we did we talk about the codings we simply do not utter those two words if there's one person in the galaxy that you would be okay wow with, taking this kid from the mandalorian it's got to be luke mm -hmm. you know usually john and i tend to think i if he and i are aligned on something like that it's probably gonna i like to think turn out good but mm -hmm. you know if i had been like well, no no way luke i respect that and be like okay let's figure it out but it just felt right to both of us. And if you could tell by the handle, like, the like of the lightsaber, you could probably like tell. If like if you knew power. Star Wars and stuff like that, you could probably tell it was Luke. But was this still, that's hilarious that they used Plo Koon. We wanted Mark Hamill front and center because you can't bring back Luke Skywalker right? without Mark Hamill. Was contacted oh, by shit. John and Dave, inviting me to come over and take a look at Mandalorian. They said they'd love my opinion. That should have been a giveaway. Yeah, that should have been. So I went over, yeah. over the holidays. This would have been December. Dude, that's 2019. awesome. John and I drove up together to Mark's house, and we brought the script, and we brought Luke Skywalker's wardrobe, and we brought. Dude, Rogue that's Luke. awesome. I think he's very protective of this character, and right. Oh uh, yeah. Peyton and I were just trying not to jump through our skin. We get into this because we're fans, and so there are moments like this where, even when you get used to making this stuff, there are certain moments where it just you just are. It's so surreal. Right. He came out and he was thrilled, and I think a a, a huge weight was lifted off of John's shoulders to <laughs> when that happened. When you have those feelings that uh, where it feels really compelling, you know that you're onto something, and we knew that if we could pull this off, it would represent so much to so many people. Out on location at Simi Valley for Robert Rodriguez's episode. And so oh. the crew that was gonna be kept behind for the moment when, you know, Mark Camel walked on set was gonna be the smallest possible team we needed to get the work done. Right. To give us the best chance possible to keep this secret. I said to the guys, I said, look, you don't have any worries for me. I've learned a long time ago mm -hmm. how to keep a secret. I mean, right. the Empire secret, I had to keep it for like a year and a half, but that's before social media. I said, all it takes right. is one person in a lab treating the film it's true you know, color correction there's just so many uh, variables and so many unknowns it is one person so true sees that and and goes on social media and goes guess what i saw today everybody knew that rosario was going to be ahsoka everybody knew that Timuera was going to be boba yeah like, everything kind of leaked we didn't announce anything but little by it's little true leak spring and you just want the ship to get back to the harbor mm -hmm. before yeah they did the whole thing is they done. did have a lot of leaks Mark creating artwork yes Luke, creating Whoa. some temporary visual effects that were the character of Plo Koon. <laughs> that's amazing i love i well love that for fans that Plo Koon's my favorite jedi yes and a lot of people if that's so Plo funny Koon bro the script got out would assume well of course because Dave yeah, yes. Plo Koon had a digital Plo Koon head <laughs> placed on the actor. That's awesome, bro. Mm. 
Damn it. Are you a Jedi? I am. God, that Everything music could just get me, man. Originally, and that also, let's never underestimate the importance of <laughs> John Williams. John Williams. <laughs> he wants your permission. <laughs> you know, many years ago, growing up with Star Wars, you never think you're going to be a part of making it. You know, for John, I think it's so special to have a character like Grogu that can stand right next to R2D2 in the same frame and talk yeah. to him. Yeah. You don't ever That's crazy. imagine that. And it's a huge responsibility to put that character next to those characters. You know that you see someone's inner child. And I saw in John, I saw in him, that young person that first saw Star Wars. It was right there in front of me when he, when I mentioned R2. And so I immediately did a sketch of <laughs> Aww, R2 and Grogu. talking to Grogu. That's awesome. I, like, the moment we want. It was already intense because it was already, my God, here's Mark Hamill dressed as Luke Skywalker right. on our set in a starship hallway. It was just, it felt like a dream. It was very, very strange. And I was fine. And then R2-D2 rolled on. Aww. And I just had a moment where R2-D2 was there. And I, that's when I broke down. And it felt, I, I didn't understand why it felt silly, I, you know, but I started tearing up. And I just was like, let me remember this moment. And I, even now I'm sort of moved by, I don't understand why, I really don't. I don't get it either, don't man. don't understand why. Grogu puppet is so believable. Deja mm -hmm. vu with Yoda. You know, I mean, Yoda was so real to me. I just thought when I when I was watching the episodes, I said, I've got to meet the child. And it, it's justified because I'm the only one that has any experience with his species. It's true. Before. It's true. That's who you belong with. He's one of your kind. Have that, not Damn. be afraid of that emotion at the end of the thing, because that's... To me, that was the, the win of that episode. And it felt like it merited it because to split up those two characters at the end of uh, that season uh, broke a lot of hearts. All right, pal, it's time to go. Frick mm. me, dude. Don't be afraid. What was interesting about, I think that um, what's nice about a good myth and a good story and, and certainly the world that George created is that there's room for all the archetypes of every age. Yep. And I think that's part of why it's, for it everybody. it's a generational experience. And just yep. as my father brought me to the first Star Wars, there's a lot of people who are sitting on the couch with their kids. It's a great way to introduce the next generation to Star Wars. Gosh darn, man. So good. That was the making of season two finale. Uh, honestly, it's so awesome. Seeing just, it makes my heart like, first of all, it makes my heart hurt. Just, I wish I would have had my reactions up uh, when the time came out, but it's fine. It's all right. Everything happens for a reason. I'm not like upset about it, but I just wanted, I just, this reaffirms everything, how uh, Star Wars makes me feel as a, as a person, like Star Wars means everything to me and Honestly, I, I, I don't know where I'd be without it. I don't know. Not to get too, too, too deep, but I don't know where I'd be as, like, a person or, like, I, I don't know. And it's, honestly, I think they've really captured that in this uh, season two finale of The Mandalorian. So I absolutely love these galleries every time they come out. I'm excited for the future Star Wars shows and stuff like that. But if you're into Star Wars just like me and you love all things that, hit that subscribe button and definitely leave this video a like. So... I'll see you guys in the future, and may the Force be with you, always.